and welcome back to the Life with Kikai YouTube channel. We've got Copper here and here's Sky and you guys hopefully will know about Copper and Sky a little bit already and if you haven't go back and check some of our videos on their individual personalities and you can find out a bit of our backstory. But a quick summary right now, Copper and Sky are both Alaskan Kikai, they're toy size, Sky, the black and white girl there, she is three years old and Copper, the red and white Alaskan Kikai, is two and a half years old. So in today's video, I wanted to answer a question that we get from people who are first learning about the breed and are thinking about potentially going and getting an Alaskan Kikai puppy. And that is, are Alaskan Kikai hard to own? In my experience, the answer is yes and no. Would I recommend them to first time dog owners? Probably not, unless you have a lot of time in your hands and you're willing to put in a lot of groundwork with training, you're willing to work through some of the potential issues that you may be faced with. But they are also wonderful dogs, and if you do have that time, then you will find the experience very, very rewarding. And with regards to Sky and Copper, you know, we're still in the process of training them. I mean, it's a constant thing where we try to train them on a daily and a weekly basis. They have their issues, which we're gonna talk about in this video but they also don't have some of the issues that I've seen other Alaskan Kikai owners struggle with. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna answer the question, are Alaskan Kikai hard to own based upon my experience only? If you've got an Alaskan Kikai and you're watching this, I would love if you leave a comment below and you perhaps help answer the question too to anybody who's watching and who hasn't got a Kikai and is wondering how difficult it is gonna to be to own an Alaskan Kikai. And hopefully we can come together as a community and educate others about some of the pros and cons of the breed. So one of the first things I'd say about Alaskan Kikai is that they can be quite stubborn and they can be quite willful. And this is something that we've experienced with Copper, but actually especially with his sister Sky, who is much more strong willed than Copper. Copper is quite easy to please when it comes to training because he loves food. But Sky, she has her own little mind and she won't do something unless she really wants to do it. So I would say if you're thinking about getting an Alaskan Kikai, be prepared to do training from a very young age. Try to be consistent and persistent with the training. And it's going to be a constant thing that you will have to adapt into your daily and weekly routines of your dogs because at the end of the day, you know, training is good for them. And it's also a form of mental stimulation, which can tire them out. But I have to say, Sky is still pretty stubborn. She's well trained, but like I said, she will only do something she really wants to do it. The majority of the time, she will listen to us. But on a daily basis, she definitely tests us once or twice a day with her stubbornness. So... That is something that I would say is quite common amongst the Alaskan Kikai. So another thing I would say is that they can be quite shy and skittish. And this is actually something that the Alaskan Kikai Association of America reference on their own website, that the dogs can be skittish and shy around people they don't know. So it's a good idea. And this is advice that was given to me from our breeder when we first got Sky and Copper. And then especially when Copper continued to be extremely shy around people. And that's try to expose your, do your dogs, or in this case, your Kikai, to as many different situations as you can as when they're puppies. So bring them everywhere with you. If somebody holds them, let them give your, pup your Kikai a treat. You know, bring them into the town, into the cities, and obviously in controlled environments where your dog isn't completely overwhelmed. Now, Skye is very social, and we've never really struggled with this issue at all with her. I think maybe at the very, very start when she was a puppy, she was a little shy. You could come into our house tomorrow, and within probably 20 seconds, Sky will be over to you, wanting attention. You could come down and sit on my couch or on my chair. Sky will be jumping on your lap and she just wants attention. She actually likes attention, I think, more strangers than she likes it off me. She loves the attention of mum too. But Copper is very shy, so when we have people in our house, he will usually try and sit in his dog bed in the corner. He doesn't really want to be picked up. He doesn't really want to be held. He doesn't really want to be touched by them. Okay, so let's continue with other ways that Alaskan Kikai can be quite challenging to own. Now, another thing that I would say is recall. Um, again, there's a lot of Kikai owners that don't have any issues with recall and they can happily walk their dogs off leash and their dogs will come back to them. But, my, but me and my wife, we don't let Sky and Copper off lead. We do have lung leads that we use to practice recall and if we're in obviously a enclosed environment we will allow them off the lead but when we're out and about just generally we don't let them off lead because their recall isn't great and i have to say that amongst the clique people that i speak to i'd say at least 50 percent of people say their dogs have bad recall um so obviously you can work on that in training and we are working on that and we have the long leads so we go into fields and we'll practice getting sky and copper to run to us back and forth 
And at one stage we had it really, really good. And we actually had walked them a couple of times in a big park and they would come back to us. But obviously with COVID, it's not been as easy to train now at the moment. So the past six or seven months, we haven't been able to do as much recall training as we would have liked. So their recall has definitely diminished to the point of where I went to that same park, dropped the lead and allowed Copper and Sky to roam. Sky came back to me when she was called, but Copper ran around for about 25 minutes chasing birds and I had, couldn't get him back. So what else? Well, another thing that I would say about owning Alaskan Klikai, and I would say 75% of the Klikai owners that I know have experienced this issue, is separation anxiety. So separation anxiety is a chronic canine disorder. It obviously occurs when you leave your home. It could be howling, whining, barking, chewing, destructive digging, and sometimes they might even do potty inside your home. And of course, the symptoms of this might not even occur after you've left the house. You could be you grabbing your keys, putting your shoes on, putting your jacket on that triggers the separation anxiety. Now, I'm not going to go into the do's and don'ts separation anxiety because I'm not an expert. And there's obviously lots of different ways of how people believe separation anxiety should be treated. But what I would say is that if my wife and I could go back to when we first got Sky and Copper, one thing we definitely would have done a lot more research on is separation anxiety because it was something that we didn't really know anything about and it completely caught us cold when Sky had separation anxiety. Hers improved over time, but Copper's is worse than ever. And I would also say if you think getting a second click is going to solve your problem, that doesn't necessarily happen. So, so that's some of the challenges that are involved with owning an Alaskan click eye. But I do want to touch upon some of the good things because obviously it's not all bad, but as a dog owner, there's a tendency to look at some of the negatives that you deal, you have to deal with, and they're the things that kind of stick out in your mind when everyone, when someone asks, "What's it like to own a Alaskan Kikai?" Some of the good things I'd say is that they're very good at city life. Sky and Copper enjoy city life, and I would say within that, they're very good at apartment living. We've lived in apartments all of their lives so far until the past month, and Sky and Copper excelled in that environment. I would also say that they're very adaptable. So as you can see right now, they're very chill. If for some reason we don't get a chance to walk them every single day, it's not really a problem. They're happy to curl up and sleep as much as they do right now. And although I would say Alaskan Klikai are quite an energetic dogs, they do also sleep a lot. So I think they're quite adaptable to the kind of lifestyle that you lead, whether it's you're someone that is in the home a lot, I guess a lot of us are right now, or whether you have an energetic lifestyle. They are very portable. My dogs are toy size, so they're quite small. They weigh about five kg, 10 pounds. They're not more than about 16 inch. No, I think they're even less. They're not that tall at all. So they're very portable, which is great, especially when I lived in the city. So if I had to go on the tube or a train, I could pick them up easily. I'm sure some of you guys may have seen our rucksack video too, which Sky absolutely loves. I would also say that they make very good companions. Obviously, they're very affectionate. They're very loyal to me and my wife. They like Velcro dogs. Sky less so than Copper. Copper follows us everywhere, where Sky is a little bit more independent and we'll find her in the bedroom by herself. But when it comes to evening time, um, she loves nothing more than to curl up next to my wife and I, especially my wife. And they're very loving and affectionate in that way. And they are like best friends, you know, we wouldn't be able to live without them. We really do love them a lot. So while the Alaskan Kikai might be small and they're not going to make effective guard dogs, they are excellent watchdogs. So if they see something or hear something, they usually do let out a bark and we'll let you know. Let's try and test this for you right now. Sky Copper, who's that? Who's that? Go get him. Who's that? So I hope that's answered some questions that people may have had about what Alaskan Klikai are like. So for now I'm going to sign off. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Sky and Copper and about the Alaskan Klikai. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. We'd love to have you as a subscriber and you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Our user handle is Life with Klikai.